What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State Where in between episodes I looked up, so apparently somebody was supposed to tell us where the HQ was And they didn't Which is the weirdest thing, like they were supposed to tell us where the HQ was I don't know if it happens like in the next day or whatever We may just stay looting for a little while, but anyways, the, the Coyote headquarters is up here I looked it up because I figured that it was weird that Regina was in the gang And yet she didn't tell us where the headquarters was so that we could take the fight to the enemy And so how do we figure that out? But anyways, it's up in the top right somewhere from what I understand We'll go take a look over there in a little bit But for right now, we got a couple of days till they're going to attack us I'm going to wait out and see if maybe somebody tells us so that I'm not like totally cheating but yeah, I looked it up in between episodes simply based on the fact that like it felt weird to me. It felt really, really weird to me. Why are we not killing zombies with like one hit right now? I am becoming irritated with the fact that you are all failing to do your job at a capable level. Like these zombies didn't like magically get tougher. You guys are just like messing up lately and like not hitting very hard. Like here, finish the zombie. There you go. Awesome. Fantastic. Now that the zombie's down, I'm going to line everybody up to fight with this looter. The looter's going to try and line himself up to take a shot at us on his next turn. Or he'll just run up on us like that and then he'll get katanad. It's up to him. Is that an actual verb that you can use? Katanad? It sounds like a verb that I can use. I'm going to use it. I think I'm just going to... I'm, I'm going to forestall all of my sort of trepidation about using the word and I'm going to say it. Katanad. This guy's definitely getting katanad. On this side, I'll probably have them swap in so that there we go. There it is. Regina's attack finds a weak spot and got them for 108 points of damage. To be fair, they're not really using armor here. Let's put this guy out. No, it can't end this way. Well, it already did. I'm afraid you're a little bit too late to make that protestation. You're done for, my friend. You're done for. For those of you that may not have seen the earlier episode, in the earlier episode, we had finally been called out by the Coyotes. The biker gang that we've been having trouble with since the beginning of the game and in fact in the early game They are the biggest threat to you and as you're in this part of the game They're not actually quite so bad anymore. And I don't really worry about them that much. This is a weird hotel room back behind the here Let's open this up. It's only gonna take us like one swing. It shouldn't make too much noise We might get a couple of zombies that come and investigate but for right now They say we've got three days to deal with the enemy and so I'm gonna wait it out like I know generally Where the coyote headquarters is because we're supposed to go and assassinate the leader and so I looked it up since I thought it was weird that we have a member of the gang in our group right now who didn't tell us where their headquarters was. And I figure maybe I'm going to wait for a cue from, essentially I'm going to metagame a little bit. I looked up where the headquarters was, but I'm going to wait and see if somebody mentions it before we head on out there. And then if it gets down to like the last day where we don't actually have anybody mentioning it yet, I'm just going to say that it's like a weird bug or something. And then we'll head on over there and, oh, shnikes, zombies are, no, run! There's, oh wow, that actually brought them all in for some reason. Why was that door the trigger? Like, that door right there was the trigger for them all to come in. God, and they're so bugged out right now, too. They're all, like, on top of each other. If you wait a second, they should fix themselves. While we wait, we might want to actually, so that we're making good use of the episode, we'll probably go over here and start dealing with some of this stuff. Oh, never mind. They saw us from that side. Well, there it is. I live for this shit, said the dung beetle. I like dung beetles. There's something respectable about a dung beetle. Like, it has, like, the worst job on Earth. All it does is, like, roll dung all day, every day. And then it, like, eats it. So, basically, it has to spend all day rolling shit. And then at the end of the day, it has to take a big old bite out of that literal turd sandwich. And yet it just does it because it's a dung beetle. And that's what dung beetles do. The dung beetle's okay with it. He doesn't resist his plight. And I respect that. Being able to just, like, live with a shitty situation and be like, hey, I'm not trying to be punny right there. I'm just kind of, like, throwing it out there that... If you can live with that situation, it's respectable. Eh, I like that. Alright, a couple of Zeds down over here. Let's go ahead and get going with these sugar bars. Obviously, we've got to stock our lovely, lovely shelter up with as many goodies as possible. Those health foods, like sugar bars. A little bit of gas right there. If we could bring back some gas with us, I would definitely appreciate it. It seems like the sort of thing that we'd like to have a lot on hand of since we run the generator pretty much around the clock. I'd be slightly worried that running a generator like this would kind of like wear it down. I don't know. Like I ran an air compressor all day every day when I was a roofer and it seemed to do all right, but every now and again it would break down and you have to go rent one real quick while you waited for another one to come in stock or whatever. You gotta go rent one real quick for the rest of the day to finish all your work. How come you guys aren't going into that door right there? I would love for you to go in that door. I hope you don't have any AP left either. That would be terrible if you have a ton of AP left. It would make me sad in many varying colors and varieties. Does sadness have different colors? Like, we know that it has blue, but does it encompass multiple shades of blue? Or is it really just sort of like that stereotypical royal blue stands for the sadness 
I'm gonna step him over to here because it's safer, and I'll put her right here. Take a swipe at that Zed, but it's not gonna be enough, unfortunately. And then he's way outside the combat right now, so... At the end of the day, we're gonna be fighting a lot of zombies. A lot of zombies stepping on into our hemisphere. It's okay, though. If they step on in, we're gonna bat them on out. Literally. We have bats everywhere. That's pretty much like our go-to zombie slaying weapon. I feel like a wood bat, you would break it over somebody's head eventually. The aluminum bats, I think, would last for a while as zombie deterrents. However, the wooden bats, I I think they break pretty often when you hit baseballs with them, so... I feel like they'd break eventually if you're hitting human heads with them. Like, you might get a couple good heads cracked before it happened, but... I wouldn't rely on it too heavily. I'm gonna bring him over to here, even though he has, like, no bite resist. I didn't plan on fighting a bunch of zombies right now. That was not, like, my goal or thing that I was leaning towards. Yeah, so our bite resistance is going to be really, really low for the time being. It's like that zombie's getting her song on. She has not, even in death, she hasn't given up her singing career. She still wants to get in there. She wants to prove to Simon that she's the singer that she says she is. Go down, zombie. If I can kill you on this turn, it will make me very happy, because that means Tweedletime can step forward and handle the other zeddies. I don't know why I did that. That was a terrible plan right there. However, let's step to here. With a 90% chance to hit, we should be able to land a couple of katanas all upside this thing's head. And there's another bite. Damn. At least it didn't do anything on the plus side. On the plus side. There we go. Get out of here. I like how they have an extra animation just for, like, knocking zombies off of somebody. Is this one bugged? What's wrong with this zombie right now? This zombie won't let us attack him. We gotta wait. That means he's probably bugged out and he's actually like inside the building or something. If you can't click on him, it means he's somewhere else and he's got to wait for him. Once he comes up a little bit more, we'll be able to kill him. Yeah, he's actually over here then. So that it might actually explain why we couldn't get inside the building too, is because he might have been in the way of the door or something. I don't know. Weird things happen with this game. This game has a serious amount of bugs like below the hood. Like a lot of random stuff you're going to run into as you play it. I've never been disingenuous about that. I've never tried to hide it. I do like the game, but seriously... You are going to run into some serious bugs when you play it. Even after a considerable amount of patching, you're going to hit a lot of bugs on a daily basis. Like, you're probably not going to be able to go more than one play or one, one PlayStation, one play session without hitting at least two or three. They won't be game-breaking, but they will be annoying, or at least slightly disorienting. Alright, so now that that's done, we got this building all cleared out. Didn't we break down the door over here? Oh, no, I think it was just this one. I think it was just this one. I wish the little looty thing went away above the tops of, like, loot objects after you looted them so that you didn't have to worry about them anymore. Like, once they no longer had items inside of them. So once the item ain't inside them, it would no longer light them with this little icon thingy, I guess. Mini fridge! All right. I love raiding the mini bar, little mini fridge. I've only stayed in, like, a nice enough hotel, like, one time for them to have, like, a mini fridge that was, like, stocked up with stuff. Most of the time, I'm up in the Motel 6, and I'm not even mad about it. I'd be like, mm-hmm, that $24 a night? Yep, who cares if the bed goes crunch when you lay on it? At least my wallet still has a little bit of Skrilla inside of it. Oh, man, a bunch of looters in here. Okay, break line of sight. I don't really even care if we get hit with a bat because we have bludgeoning resistance, so it's not even that big of a deal. I just don't want the gunner to get any shots off on any of our people in leather because it will do a little bit of damage. And right now we're trying to recover and get ready to go fight with the coyotes in another location. So that looter is now stunned. What the hell just hit me? It was a giant bat. I know it felt like a train, but that's just because, like, Vic has those real, real beef caked out. He's got, like, trapezius muscles, and then he's got, like, biceps and triceps and, like, pecs on pecs and stuff. It's a little bit weird. His actually... It looks like his chest is being terrace farmed. It's a little bit odd. Either way, though, welcome to hell. You're now dead. Did you enjoy that? I hope you did, because, frankly... Oh, man. That guy's just gonna stay in there. Unfortunate. Give me somebody with a bullet vest, and they'll go in first. Go ahead, shoot me. I dare you. Watch this. I'm like Superman. Oh, never mind. You didn't hit me. Didn't even hit me. See, I was gonna try and convince you that I was Superman... And not in, like, the Goldfinger sense, like in the actual Superman sense. See, you just got murdered by a guy wielding a katana. What happened to you right now? What happened to you? Here, I'm gonna kill your friend, and then I'm coming for you. Just letting you know that that's how this is gonna go down. Go ahead, shoot your shot. Go for it. I dare you. Put the gun right up against my chest and squeeze it. Oh, what was that? I think. Oh, wow, they actually critted on me for 18. Alright. 
that was actually more like happenstance and chance than anything else. Like, let's let's be honest here. It's a 38. 38s don't usually hit for that much, but who knew that the enemy was going to crit me right there? Eh. Like one of those random things that happens that you can't really predict. Crits will go through armor in this game is what I'm trying to say. Right? They have 357 rounds, but they don't have... I, th I feel like that would be, if there was like a 57 caliber round, I feel like that would be really, really confusing. You'd be like, what do you have right now? Oh, I got 357s. Like, that would be really, really confusing. You'd be like, so what What? What round do you have? 357s. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm so confused right now. You frustrate me with your ambiguous wording. Although I would say that the comedy would flow from there. It might be funny for like a gun guy show. I don't know. What do you have right now? 357s. You see those new 57 caliber guns? <laughs> I don't even know if it's possible for that to be a thing, but still, it seems kind of funny to me. Just as somebody that has studied the comedic arts briefly. Briefly. Very, very briefly. And by that I meant I read the book in my underwear. Let's go to this side. We will go to the coffee station. Mmm. It's amazing that there's still stuff that's not looted. Is it just me, or is it weird that after 30-something days there's still stuff that's not looted? After 30 days, my best guess would be that just about everything would be just looted to shit and back. Can't move to target. Everybody out here, we're going to go solo mode. Hold on, we're going solo. Going solo right now. There it is. Solo like Han. There we go, we'll grab that in there. Obviously, I don't think we can loot the ATM right now, but... Let's bring this... There's somebody using a machine outside that sounds like a flatulent, like, bumblebee. It's got like a really, it's got like a really, really low pitched weed whacker noise that sounds like it doesn't care. Like the engine's kind of like, like it really. There's a dead lady in a bathtub with some chocolate. So I can't decide if that's that's in game. Wait, are there gonna be like predators around here or something? Because that's in game. That's not outside. That little. It, it's coming from the soundtrack somewhere. I feel like we're gonna run into somebody with a chainsaw at any moment. Or something like a weaponized weed whacker. A weaponized weed whacker seems like it wouldn't be that intimidating though. I don't know. Like, I can't take a weed whacker seriously. Like, aren't weed whackers specifically built so that they won't cut your fingers off and stuff? I thought they built them like that now so that like, it'll give you a cut if you hit somebody with it, but like... It's not gonna like cut your head off or anything like a chainsaw would. It's like, yang! Take that thing right off. Oh, it would make, make too much of a mess. It's too messy. I like weapons with a little bit of finesse, like katanas and like things that cut cleanly. So you're like, whishing! Then you got like that moment in the anime where you stand there and like the blades, the screen goes black and it's like, whishing! With like the white line. And then both people are standing there and all of a sudden the guy that got killed, the, the blood comes out of his neck like, Psss! and like sprays out in one direction. Awesome. So awesome. It never gets old. Every, it's such a cliche and it happens in so many animes. But every time it happens, I'm just like, ah, oh, that was so awesome. Do it again. We need a whole episode of just this. And that's how Fist of the North Star was made. Somebody was like, listen, what if we just got rid of all the swords and katanas and stuff? And we had a guy who just like pokes people on pressure points and then they explode as they would have had they been struck with a katana loaded with dynamite. And you'd be like, yeah, this, I think we've got a show right now. You can almost see the heads nodding in the boardroom. You're like, oh, yeah, we got a show now. we got a show right now. Fist of the North Star is one of those things that everybody should watch, even if you're not even into anime. Even if you hate anime, like if you're really, really critical of anime. Like, I don't hate anime. I'm just really hypercritical of it. And so, like, even if you're like me, where you're just like the giant anime cynic, where it's very, very rare for you to find something that you like, Fist of the North Star is one of those things you should probably watch. It's, it's enjoyable from the front end to the back. It's like the perfect 80s anime. That's the only way that I know how to describe it. It's the perfect 80s anime. You know what I mean, where it's got like the heavy metal guitars in the background all the time. The animation's kind of clunky and weird, but at the same time, it's very distinctive of the style of the time. Like, all anime looked like that at the time, so... You know, I don't know. There's a couple things left here that we can loot. I'll probably... Let's take this stuff back to base. We'll come back out here. We'll loot the remainder. And I suppose that'll be... I hate the way the stairs work in this game. I really sincerely do. They're weird. Very, very weird. Because it's constantly, like, teleporting you back for other people that are coming down the stairs. It's like it has to give, like, the automatic... I don't know. If they couldn't get the stairs rigged right, I would have just left stairs out of the game and everything would have just been like some one story and we would have just lived with it. Or I would have instanced it out the way that it was done in like Baldur's Gate where when you went upstairs it took you to a whole different like map that you loaded into. Anyway, that's how that's how I personally would have done it. Just, just me. I'm not saying that that's the right way or the wrong way to do it. I'm just saying if I was doing it, that's how I would have done it. 
Obviously, that's easy for me to say from my ivory YouTube tower. Is a YouTube tower made of ivory? I don't know if it's quite ivory just yet. I feel like that would be cruel to the elephants. Like, I don't want my tower to be made out of ivory if I can help it. I do have some ivory salt shakers, though. Where they came from, I have no idea. They're, like, from 1915 or something. They're in my closet right now. They were in with a bunch of mementos from, like, I think a house sale. I went to a estate sale, I think. And they were like, we have ivory salt shakers. And I was like, yeah, I'll buy those. Nobody else seemed to want them, so I bought them. I don't know. They're just going to get thrown away anyways. Elephant's been dead for 100 years at this point. Ain't going to hurt anybody by buying it, I suppose. But yeah, I got two ivory salt shakers in my house that got them at an estate sale. Seemed like an interesting thing. I don't think they're worth anything. I think I Googled it or something like that, and they aren't worth anything. They're just like, apparently there's a lot of them around. These were like a very popular thing back in the early 1900s. And apparently everybody held on to them, too. That's the other thing. is like nobody got rid of them, and so they're not that rare. Yeah. Ivory salt shakers. I don't have my shotgun loaded right now. I'd be willing to bet, though. Paul, what are you doing right now? Let me... I wish there was a select all option for everything in your inventory so that you could just, like, drop... I think... <laughs> he said, no, don't do that. Don't do that. That's a terrible plan. How do I deselect all? There we go. Select all on that side. There we go. See? That's what happens when I complain. I look like an idiot every time. Every time. Every single time. I should really... You'd think that I would learn and just not complain or, like, not bring up things until I had verified it. We have 74 jars of codeine. Nobody needs that much codeine. Like, I feel like we are really, really, really spurring on somebody's addiction right now at this place. There's no way. We're curing everything with codeine right now. Be like, oh, you got a boo-boo? Codeine. You got a headache? Codeine. Your eye hurts? Codeine. Oh, what's that? Your neck's itchy? Codeine. Like, we just fix everything with codeine around here. It's like the 1800s with opium. I'm like, oh, what's that? You got the sniffles? Enjoy your full-strength opium. Oh yeah. That's why I watched a documentary on the pharmaceuticals of the 1800s and basically what I what I came to the realization of is that everything was codeine. We'll go back to the motel because I don't like to leave locations unlooted. Like I would prefer to have them all clear. I would swear that we went to the supermarket. What did we we went to a big supermarket, didn't we? I know we've been to one in this playthrough, but I don't know like where it is or what I missed here. I do want gas for sure. Normally, I don't want gas because it makes you not so... It doesn't put you on good terms with other people. They'd be like, oh, don't stand next to him right now. He's got gas. He'll boil your leg hair off, you know? Like, But hey, we're not inside a car right now. You can't judge me. You know that's a bad thing. I had an ex-girlfriend that used to do that. She would fart in the car and then she'd roll up the windows and lock them. I'm like, damn. You wouldn't be paying attention to. You'd have like, you'd be looking at your Game Boy or something while you were driving somewhere. You'd be looking at your phone. And then you hear like, as the windows would go up, you'd be like, ah, oh, god damn it. And she'd be sitting over there laughing her ass off like it was the funniest thing on earth. I'd be like, you've been hanging out with too many dudes. Hanging out with too many dudes. Come on now. You can't just like sneak that up on somebody. Like, you save that for the fishing trip and nowhere else. That's for like the fishing trip, like right there, or like the trip to the convention. It's definitely. Wow, I'm getting critted left and right right now, and it's actually sort of embarrassing. I don't want to be critted anymore. I would prefer these zombies are getting really, really lucky with those crits. Like, seriously, we've been critted like a bunch of times in the last little bit. I don't know if the zombies are getting buffed as we go through the game or what's going on, but seriously, these crits are getting out of hand. Getting out of hand, Rob. Yeah, nah. Now that I've refilled my med kit, that annoying chainsaw sound is back. Yeah, it's definitely, I'm, oh no, it's from outside, god, it sounded like it was coming through my headphones, it's because I was taking my headphones off, and he was stopping every single time I take my headphones off, and so I was like, it's gotta be the headphones, like I couldn't hear it with the headphones off, but no, it's a guy outside, never mind, it's not in the game, I am losing my mind right now, feel free to ridicule me, oh my god, that was weird, but how did he like perfectly turn it off every single time that I took my headphones off, that was like 10 coincidences in a row, just like perfectly timed. That doesn't happen. I've taken statistics classes. I know how this works. Weird. Very, very weird. Did you not break down? It's 30 damage. Come on, man. You can break down the door. I believe in you. Now we're making all kinds of noise. Zombies going to be creeping around like, hey, I heard you breaking down a door. I don't know if you knew this, but here's my card. We zombies are quite proficient at breaking down doors. We're good at it. If I was in the apocalypse like this, my dumb ass would be living in one of these little public bathrooms somewhere with the door locked on the inside. Just like, please don't hurt me. Actually, that wouldn't be too terrible of a plan, aside from the fact that it's gross. I mean, you gotta, you already got a toilet, and plumbing still works as long as the sewer system's running. 
The plumbing should still work. It doesn't rely on electricity or anything like that. Assuming the utilities are still functioning, you should be all right. There's a Happy Face Tasty Ted's Family Barbecue Restaurant. Is it barbecue? I think it's barbecue. It should be barbecue. I'm going to say that it's barbecue. Oh, man. It's okay. Give me a pat on the back. I'm all right with it. I'm all right with it. You ever have a kid named Pat? Like, you ever give a little kid named Pat a backpack ride? Or you give him, like, a... You know, you let him ride on your back like a little monkey? It's a pat on the back. You know, you knew that was coming. You knew it had to come. You got a pat on the back. That's what it is. That's the dad joke of the week right there. Dad joke of the week. I could definitely hear my dad making that joke. when I, If I had, like, a little cousin named Patrick, like, up on my back. Two damage, unfortunate. I really would prefer to take less damage right now because we've got to get, like, all of our health back before we go and tackle. Come on, man. Really? It's one zombie, bruh. It's one zombie. Like, I'm pretty sure I could handle, like, five or six just by backpedaling. Just walk backwards. That's it. Like I said, turn-based games. Turn-based games and zombies just make you feel like your characters are absolute idiots. You just be like, idiots by absolute. They don't just make liquor. They also make Paul. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and we'll grab... I guess we're getting ketchup out of this place. Ketchup counts as food, so apparently we just have like a ketchup lazy dinner at some point. I know that I picked up the grubs and nastiness, but whatever. It'll be alright. I know for a fact that I clicked first right there. I clicked like 30 times. I should have gotten the first turn. This is shenanigans. I'm going to get my broom. Alright, don't mess this up. Oh, Vic. Victor. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? You have one job. Hit zombie with blunt object. There, see? Tweedle time never messes it up. Every single time, Tweedle time's on point. He never misses. Tweedle time's like the ninja samurai up in here, just taking care of business. He's the sushi chef that we deserve. Taking people out with precision. Because that's what really matters. It doesn't matter if you take them out. You gotta take them out with precision. If the precision isn't included, you don't get like the extra prestige of having completed the task. Alright, and so I've kind of forgotten what we've looted at this point. I figure something out here is probably lootable. Yeah, there it is right there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop controlling people that can only attack twice. And start controlling people. Where did my ninth AP go? This is the point in my commentary where I'm actually going to do post-commentary right now. Because I realized that what happened at this point in the video is that I put on the body armor that the soldiers gave us. And it lowered my AP. So I actually like... I basically spent like the next five minutes of the episode just like panicking and trying to figure out where my AP went. It was on the armor. So anyways, I'm going to break the episode off right here. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. I look forward to seeing you all in the future. I'm saving you all from me sitting around panically trying to figure out what happened to my AP. So I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.